Welcome back to the channel. I'm Dr. Onlushigan, and this is Angelic Lift Wellness. So today I want to talk to you guys about some helpful tips for effective weight loss. I'm going to talk about five effective tips. And this one's helped me um, in my weight loss journey. So I'm going to share with you and hope that it helps you as well. So the first one is making water your wingman. Yes, water is the ultimate sidekick, okay, against empty calories. Okay, so that's the first one, right? If you think about it, if you stay hydrated, drink enough water every day, you're probably going to eat less because the emptiness that you feel that gives you that feeling like, oh, I'm hungry, I need to go eat something, is not going to be there if you're constantly hydrating or drinking water to kind of stay full. So I call it the wingman, right? You've got to stay hydrated. And the easiest way to figure out how much water do you need on a daily basis to make your target is just take your weight. If you're 200 pounds, then you've got to hit for half of that in ounces, okay? Make that your target. Are you going to hit that number every day? Probably not. But if you have a target, you're more likely to get close to it or get there. If you're just winging it where you don't have any idea, then you're not likely going to reach it, right? And um, you know, a lot of times you, you think, oh, I, I drank water. And then at the end of the day, you realize, oh, I only finished one 16 ounce bottle <laughs> because you didn't have a target. So having a target of half of your body weight in ounces is a good place to start, okay? So that's the number one tip is staying hydrated. What I also know is that there is a part of our brain that actually signals to our body that we're hungry, right? But what we now know is that that same area can be signaled if you're thirsty, if you're just in, you know, thinking about intercourse, or if you're actually hungry, right? So if those three things can trigger the same emotion or the same chemical reaction in your body, well, at least test it and make sure it's not just dehydration first before you go feed it with the other two, <laughs> okay? So <laughs> just a quick tip for you <laughs> right there, all right? So the next one, uh, the next tip is tricking your brain to think that you are eating a lot more than you're actually eating, okay? So this is a natural tip, right? This, you know, it's been tested, and tried and true, okay? If you use smaller plates to serve yourself your meal, you are going to feel like you are fuller. There's been a lot of patients that, you know, I've seen in my practice that I've been, you know, I saw them because they were preparing to go have bariatric surgery. And one of the things that we teach them is that, well, once they go through this process of having their stomach cut into this small pouch, they're not going to be able to eat a whole lot. So they have to start learning now, weeks and months before the surgery, on changing their ways on their portion size and things like that. We teach them to go buy smaller plates, to buy smaller cups, smaller everything, smaller spoons, smaller forks, to prepare them for the surgery. So this patient starts to do these things and guess what? A lot of them start to lose weight even before the surgery. Because now, when they see their plate, it looks full, piled eye with food, even though that portion would be normally so much smaller if they had put it on a bigger plate. So just your brain seeing, oh my God, that's a lot of food on this plate that I have to eat, actually makes you start feeling full. And so it is one trick that you can play on your own self and just change out the plates that you're serving yourself with. Start using the baby's plate and pile it up, right? So it looks like, oh my God, this salad, there's a lot of salad here. Or this, you know, piece of steak or whatever it is that's on your plate looks so much bigger. And by the time you sit down to start eating it, you're already feeling satisfied. 
Okay, so that's tip number two. Now, the third tip is something that the food industry has mastered, which is the, I'm gonna call it the salad dance, just because I don't know what else to call it, okay? So, when you go to the grocery store, and especially the fancier grocery stores, okay, you'll find that they have certain types of music playing. And it is usually the kind of music that makes you just keep grooving as you're going along, right? And before you know it, you're putting all kinds of stuff in your cart. You think you might need it sometime, maybe not, but you're buying it anyway because this music is just jamming. All right, that right there. Okay, so that's what the food industry is mastered, is that when you play music that puts you in a certain mood, well, you're going to behave a certain way, right? So when you start, tossing your greens and your salads and your veggies, the things that you like don't naturally gravitate towards, well why don't you put that groovy music on and start playing it while you're getting that food ready. You know, if you're like one of those born in the 90s and it was the, you know, you know, era of a certain, you know, genre of music, play that music. Remember all times when you were, you know, clubbing or having fun and and play that music while you're making that food so that by the time you get to sitting down to eating it, you're in a good mood. You're going to be more willing and likely to eat that food. So you can create that kind of, you know, environment around tossing your greens, around, you know, steaming your veggies, season it with spices that kind of enhance their flavor, not necessarily just put salt and, you know, all these things that are not so healthy for you. Put new herbs, try new flavors of you know different cuisines on your greens and just give it a dance, give it a new tune and, and then try it that way, okay? So that's my third tip. Now let's go to tip number four. This is basically making the, the veggies, <laughs> the VIP on your plate. You know, you know, instead of, you know, those lazy cookies, you know, you're going to make the veggies like the, you know, the, the VIP, the very important things on your plate. So the way you do this is you make them colorful, right? So, you know, one green boring veggie is not going to spice up your plate. So the more colorful you make your plate, especially when it comes to veggie, the more likely you're going to try it. Right, so you think about when you see a, a tray of, of, of veggies at a party. Usually they don't put just one kind. They put a variety of, kind, of, of, of veggies so that you can try different ones. The one that's crunchy, the one that's fibrous, the one that's you know more leafy and so on. So you try different ones and different colors. So the other thing, important thing about these different colors is that each color brings a different phytonutrient. Okay, so what I mean by phytonutrient, that means a, a different ingredient that actually is good for you. So the reds bring a certain nutrient, the greens bring a certain nutrient, the purples and the yellows and the reds, they all bring different nutrients. So if we make our, our plate a veggie of rainbow, we're, we're going to get all these different phytonutrients that are really good for our immune system, that is, gives us antioxidants that help us fight inflammation and toxins in our body and neutralizes free radicals that make our skin glow and give us B vitamins and iron and all these nutrients that we get when we eat vegetables. So make the veggies your VIP, make them a variety of colors like the rainbow and that is really where you start to enjoy eating those veggies. Now, the other tip I have for you today is basically swapping your stash of snacks for laughter. Okay, so any of you that know me, one of the things I love to do for fun is watching comedy, okay? I would, you know, sit there and listen to comedy from uh, anyone that is funny, okay? So, we know that actually laughing can burn calories. And so even if I'm not out doing something active, I could, instead of watching the news that's kind of like just pouring negative bad news into me, 
I could be laughing and enjoying the the so, someone else's opinion about how they look at things in life, right? Things that might be upsetting to you, someone else would just bring their own perspective and you would just start cracking up. Right? The funnier it is, the better, right? Because you're gonna use all your abdominal muscles and you're gonna crack up, laugh, and burn calories. And as you know, we say laughter is also good medicine. Why? Because it's gonna release joyful neurotransmitters in your body. That's gonna help you feel better, sleep better, enjoy life, and instead of just being negative at all times, right? So this is a very simple tip that you can include in your weight loss journey to help you get to your weight loss goal. Now, this last one I'm just gonna throw in there because I was really just gonna do five tips. But this sixth one is basically celebrate every pound lost, okay? And in fact, I give my patients extra points if they are able to celebrate in public. Meaning like, you lose a pound, you celebrate in public, okay? So what does that do? Well. The more you're celebrating what has happened, you're putting yourself in a good light and the likelihood of continuing in that habit, right? So, as opposed to the patient that's complaining about how many pounds they've not yet lost, the patient that actually celebrates what they have lost, I found in my practice that those patients continue to lose. They just, because they're looking forward to the next celebration. They come to the clinic and they're excited to get on the scale because they're like they're excited to show me how much they've lost and how well they're doing and they want that public celebration which we love to do in our practice we celebrate patients as they lose their weight because we know it's not just aesthetically looking better it's we know we're prolonging lives we know we're helping them prevent disease we know we're creating this human that's going to be, have a better relationship with their family and their children and their, their co-workers and their employers and their uh, employees and so on, right? So we really celebrate patients as they lose their weight, right? And we encourage the ones that have not lost their weight to stick to it, to do that which we've told them to do, to look at what's sabotaging them and fix those behaviors. So. Please comment in the section below if you have any tip that is helping you stay on your weight loss journey or giving you results or an edge against that person that you're competing with. <laughs> Alright, see you on the next one.